Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is using global variables inside of Power Virtual Agents. Let's go. Now let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. Uh, this is something that's actually come up quite a few times recently with customers, so I figured it would be worth just to create a short video on the topic itself. So naturally when you are building chatbots, it is a best practice to avoid requesting duplicate data from a user. That is only going to turn them off and not make them not want to use your chatbot. But there also are scenarios where we might need to use common data in multiple topics and we don't want to reprompt every time we need to access this data. Now, when we go ahead and solve this problem, we can do so using variables and variables have two scopes. One would be in the topic scope. The other would be in the bot or what we're calling global variables in this context. Meaning if you only need to use a piece of data once and only within a specific topic, that is the preferred scope that you use. But if there is a chance that you will use this data in multiple topics, you can declare it as bot scope, giving it that global variable experience that allows you to use it anywhere across your chatbot. Now, when it comes to these bot scoped or global variables, if the value hasn't been populated yet and you're going to use it, whether that's displaying it back to the user or passing it to a Power Automate Cloudflow, what will happen is the user will get prompted to go ahead and provide it instead of providing an error. We've all sort of been involved in those untyped or just in time variable scenarios where if you try to use a variable that hasn't been initialized, you naturally throw an error. This feature essentially avoids that. So it's actually pretty cool in the sense that if it hasn't been populated, it's gonna automatically ask for it, which is pretty cool. The other thing, and we'll save this for another video, but global variables can also be externally set through query parameters. And so this allows you to say, if you had an e-commerce website where you want to pass in some sort of context based upon where they are, you can actually go ahead and do that through query parameters. And that's a pretty cool feature, but we'll save that for another video. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. Now this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. Okay, so let's just go ahead and let's just jump right into a demo. I think that's the best way to approach this. Okay, so here we are, we're in Power Virtual Agents, the maker portal. And the use case is we're going to have some sort of like e-commerce store and we want to be able to interact or on behalf of the user in order for them to do things like, say, looking up their order to see what is the status of their order itself. Now, in order to do so, we're going to request their email address and that will give us context about this specific customer that we have. Now what I've chosen to do just for illustrative purposes is inside of my greeting, I've gone ahead and I have asked the customer for their email address. So this is the standard greeting and the greeting might be a good place to, to seed this information, especially if there's a high probability that it'll be used in many different places. And so what I've done here is I'm asking a question, can you please provide your email address? I am gonna go ahead and use the email entity, and then I've gone ahead and I have declared a variable. Now, whenever you go ahead and ask a question, a variable will automatically get created for you. It's just gonna be called var. So what you can do is click on it and then change the name. And then what you do is you change the usage here. This is essentially our scope. And by default, it will have a topic scope. And what we want to do is we want to use bot scope. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, as I talked about setting it from an external source, that is where you would enable this. But like I said, we'll, we'll focus on that in another video. So we'll go ahead and we'll capture the email address. And then we're just gonna respond with how can I help you? 
Now at this point in the conversation, what we're basically asking the user to say is, okay, like how can I help you? And whatever they type in after that is going to get picked up by the natural language understanding engine and it's going to route to the appropriate topic. So that's great, that is our greeting topic. Now what I have done is I have provided a topic called order lookup. And the intent here is that I want to be able to look up an order and I'm gonna do that through the use of a flow. So here what's happening is uh, when they provide any of these trigger phrases or something similar, this topic will get created. Then what I'm gonna indicate is, okay, let's look up your last order. I'm now passing in this email address. This email address is essentially our, our global variable, bot.email address. And so what will happen is if I've already captured this information through the greeting topic, great, it'll automatically get pushed. But if I have it, because perhaps they've gone directly into this topic on its own, at this point we will prompt for that email address and then we will go ahead and just provide a response. So let's start off, there's essentially two sort of paths we can take. We'll start off with the greeting and then we'll reset the conversation and then we'll go directly to this topic just to give you a feel for this. So I'm gonna walk up to the bot and I'm just gonna say hi. And then here we are in our greeting topic and we will be able to go ahead and to provide our email address. So I'm just going to provide it com and here now we've set that variable and you can see I did turn on track on between topics that is helpful when we see just how we're sort of bouncing around all of the different topics that are being called so here here what's happened is uh, I've displayed a message from my greeting topic just saying how can I help you now here what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and say order lookup and now what we're gonna do is get bounced back over to our order lookup topic and you can see we've automatically provided this information to them. So what's happened, if we look at the debugger, we provided a phrase that aligns here with our trigger phrases. We've indicated, let's look up our last order. And then we automatically passed in the email address. And then as a result, we go ahead and return the details for their order lookup. So that's use case number one. Let's now go ahead and let's reset. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go directly, I'm not gonna trigger the greeting topic, I'm going to go directly to this topic. So we provide a statement that uh, hits the, that wakes up the order lookup topic and now you can see we're back over into the greeting topic. How did we get there? It's because of this global variable we know that inside of the order lookup topic that we have to provide that email address as an input. And if we don't have it, we'll automatically get routed over here. So let's go ahead and let's put in the email address and watch, this message won't get hit. We will not display this. We will get bounced back over to the order lookup topic and we will go ahead and see these values. So it's actually a pretty slick feature. It's one of those things where it allows you as a maker to be able to go ahead and create reusable variables that will save reprompting a user unnecessarily and avoid some of that additional friction. So go ahead, check that out. I think this is a, it's a really useful feature and uh, hopefully the demonstration and showing how you get transitioned across topics was very useful for you. All right, so that concludes another video. Thanks for checking it out. If you're not following me on Twitter, I would encourage you to do so. You can find me at Weirzy. You're obviously on YouTube. Appreciate the fact you're checking this out. Likes and subscribes are always appreciated as well. So that's your best way to ensure that you don't miss any future content. I do post at least once a week. So thanks for checking out this video and we'll see you again soon.